do some news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is September 25th, 2020. The time is 4.47 p.m. I'm late. A TLDR, COVID-19 test this morning. I feel like shit, but it's cool. Probably don't have it, but you never know. I'll let you guys know uh, next week news uh, <laughs> from uh, what I, if I'm bedridden uh, at that time, but I'm pretty sure it's probably not. Seals seems like a regular cold. So if I sniff or if I cough, YouTube, don't worry about putting in the comments that I have the Rona. I will know before you. Well, actually, no, probably not because here in the States, it takes days to get a fucking response. Um, I was really disappointed in that, by the way. Nobody does rapid testing out here, and everybody wants a doctor recommendation. I have to go to the doctor first if, if I want to, uh, which means I have to pay the copay uh, if I want to get a test. So, yeah. Um, bullshit. So, anyways. So, being sick is bad for your health. Don't do it. So, uh, speaking of sick, did you guys know that I released an album last week? Did you guys know? Was it last week? I think so. Well, Arsenal, it's right there. You could stream it right now on all streaming services, or you could just go pick it up right here on Bandcamp. Okay? Sick. There you go. Help me pay my copay. <laughs> all right. Speaking of... Spending money on... Oh, fuck, man. I need a, like, phone. I need a fucking lifeline to Josh for this bullshit. Anyways. First up. <laughs> first up. The NVIDIA RTX 3080 went on sale. To, uh, to much applause. With no issues whatsoever. Those of you guys who like to spend money on gaming-related stuff, you've had a very, very busy past several weeks you have had the xbox series x launch you've had the 3080 you have a ps5 unless i launch pre-orders or pre-orders for the uh, xbox uh pre-orders for the ps5 jesus jesus spending all kinds of money we're gonna talk about some of those things today though i, I actually omitted the playstation stuff because every time i mention playstation y'all fall asleep so so just know that playstation did a thing cool <laughs> so the, the crown of failure goes to so yeah 3080s boy where do we start well let's start with the actual sales process so it went on sale on their website and then sold out immediately what there must be some crazy demand that or a bot service picked it up for you one or I don't know 42 units because some people are still mining bitcoins i guess or they're trying to turn a profit on ebay probably the latter given the former is basically impossible to make any kind of profit anymore unless your power is free and even then time so bounce alerts is a service that you can it's a group that you can i guess uh, get invited to or you could you know uh, become a part of where you can use a service that will basically ping the site and then eventually get you in and get you to buy uh, or allow you to uh, purchase uh, these cards and i guess on the surface the forward facing interface uh, i read that there was actually no uh, not even a captcha to prevent any kind of uh, uh, botted, you know, purchasing uh, scripts. So it says right here, it says the script would monitor when the product would go back into stock. And once it got alerted, it was back into stock. It would check it. It would check out. Uh, however, the bot didn't, did encounter a challenge when the RTX 3080 went on sale Thursday morning and video's website briefly went down. So I had to wait until the website came back up before I could go through and buy 42 cards for some of its users. Uh, and then what do they do with those things? Like I said, they throw them right up on eBay. You could get one for $2,000. Hey, that's not, is that a 200% markup? What is the, uh, is, is the 3080, is, it, is that one? No, it's, so it's actually, that's $800 card. That's right. I think a 3090. 3090 is a $1,600 card. So I was going to say, that's not bad. A 3090, 1600 to 2000, you know, it's just a little bit of a markup, right? Um, but no, this is like a, uh, this is a much higher, it's like 350% markup. Yeah, that's rough. That's a lot. So it says, uh, so it says, whenever the site died, I would have to restart the script and hope that it would just went through to the, on the next one. The member said later adding, we had several members who managed to get one card all the way to 30 cards or more. Naturally, this would, um, 
Uh, what did it say? There's a guy who made a script that would bid absurdly high amounts for any 380, 3080 on uh, eBay auctions it found. That's right. I heard about that. Uh, that would, of course, would not get fulfilled. Yeah, people were trolling the uh, uh, the listings to basically prevent people from being able to make any legitimate sales. And you know, eBay has some mitigation for that stuff. Like they can um, eliminate some high dollar bid items, or, or the user can actually eliminate some bids, I believe, uh, if they want to. But but. At a certain point, like you don't, you don't know, you know what it's, is. Is the is the twenty one hundred dollar bid? Is that the one? That's the fake one. You don't know. Um, so yeah, good, good. <laughs> Fuck these gaming scalpers, man. Uh, so naturally, naturally, the forums and the and Reddit and everything are pissed. So here's a screenshot that I took of the forums uh, on, on the day that this all happened. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You have to deal with that. Sorry. Uh, so it says right, the world's leading AI company can't stop footwear bots. You look like fools. So how does doing everything humanly possible to stop scalpers not include CAPTCHA or wait lists? Uh, complete bullshit. I truly hope you are listening, NVIDIA. Anyone else going to AMD now? Worst launch ever. So people are very upset about this and rightfully so. Um, <laughs> uh, the subreddit. Uh, had a number of threads, so many that they actually went in series. So this is the RTX 3080 launch day thread part two. I didn't go looking to see if there was a part three. <laughs> I'm sure there's a trilogy somewhere. Um, but in here, we actually have a comment from the NVIDIA uh, representative saying that I can't comment for our partners, but we will have more cards next week. And then it says, edit. I keep getting asked ETA when the website will be restocked. All I can suggest is keep checking the website for availability. Thank you for your patience. So I noticed it's like, you know what? That was, that was seven days ago. When you say next week, I think seven days, right? Chat, wouldn't you guys agree? I think seven days is pretty accurate representation of what you what anyone would consider a week. So I decided to go to the site to see what's available next week TM. That's right. <laughs> so I decided to go and see what's available. Their featured card right here says the the uh, EVGA GeForce uh, RTX 3080 X360 XC3 Black Game Bundle. Let's go pop that open and see. So it says Game Bundle available at Micro Center, Best Buy, and Newegg. Well, let's go. Boop, boop, boop. Let's go take a look and see. Uh, we'll go here Newegg first. Out of stock. Of course. Let's see similar items below. What do they have available? Uh, the uh, <laughs> They have the uh, GeForce RTX uh, 2080. You can get 2080 for how much? For 800 for more. You could spend more if you want to get, uh, uh, if you want just a something 80, you could still fulfill that fantasy. Um, if you can't wait for the 3080 to come back in stock or to, I don't know. I guess maybe get cheaper on eBay or something. Uh, going to, to Best Buy. Best Buy uh, also sold out, of course. Sold out, so you can't get it there. Um, and then over here on Micro Center, let me actually go. I'll, I'll leave it on the black filter, the dark filter here, so you guys don't blind you guys. Uh, and they have uh, buying options. They have two buying options, okay? Option number one. Option number two, the most popular. Get it now. Please select your store. Let's click on this. Tustin, out of stock. Denver, out of stock. Duluth, Marietta, Chicago, Westmont, Overland Park, Cambridge, St. Louis Park, Brentwood, Flushing, Yonkers, Columbus, Houston, Dallas, Fairfax, out of stock. Out of stock. Well, it's next week. We don't have any in stock. Uh, we don't know when we're going to get more in. We have no idea. It's very possible that uh, it's, it's just like not going to show up anytime soon because they probably haven't resolved the issue of people going through and uh, and just botting the system. Uh, what is this? Um... Let me see. Uh, price check. The Spanish stock history. So here's the stock history here. I've actually I've not used this, but I see a whole lot of the words out of stock here. Matt, let's make this a little bit easier. See, out of stock. Well, that looks like just about all of them. Uh, there are a few here. What's this one here? See, uh, out of stock. Oh, pre-order. Okay, so basically out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not out of stock, it's on pre-order. Just suffice it to say, there are none available right now. Uh, <laughs> they 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 could not meet the demand of, uh, well, I guess, of the uh, the bot the bot system. The what is it called? It was called, uh, let's see, it's bot. No no no. Uh, bounce alerts. Bounce alerts. Yep, yeah, that's right. An automated script to run basically from the product page to payment info and then to checkout. Uh, so. People are obviously upset about this because it's not available. We will probably see more before the holidays, but you may want to wait on the 3080 simply because a lot of people are kicking it back saying that there are problems with it. So we'll start with, 
Okay, we'll start with grabbing this link and try to drag it over. There we go. So, <clears throat> it says some people are running an issue, some serious RTX 3080 problems where they're actually experiencing some CTD issues, crash the desktop, um, as well as just black screen. Um, and what I've gathered from this article here and from other places is that it seems to be an issue with a custom with custom variants that are overclocked. So the uh, Founders Edition seems to be fine. Uh, it's all of the editions that are overclocked made by you know other manufacturers uh, to spec that those are the ones out of the issues. And so temporary fixes include disabling hardware acceleration in Windows. So that might help. Uh, also underclocking the card and reducing the voltage using the Beta MSI Afterburner utility. Now. Jay's two cents, Jay Z two cents. Uh, Jay's two cents actually just made a video uh, today. I just came out a couple hours ago, and I just I just sat down and watched it. And he actually goes over the components. He does a tear down. He does he does uh, once over the components, and he points out that some of the components in it. And I, I actually have a uh, I actually have a um, uh, a card here that I could show you what components he's specifically talking about because cards haven't really changed too much. But basically, on the underside of the card, there are these components right here. It's an array of uh, of chips. And apparently this is the culprit where these specific chips here on uh, on the aftermarket, not aftermarket, but the custom variants are um, cheap. <laughs> Just cheap. And uh, the ones on the Founders Edition are apparently not. Uh, this, now this is, this is a, a GTX 560 Ti. Probably a bit more stable than the 3080 uh, in its current state. Uh, probably still a pretty good card if you like playing. Meat Boy or something. Um, but <laughs> that seems to be the issue is those components down there. Now that that to me sounds like and, J and Jay's two cents, you know, he's more knowledgeable on the component level than I am, of course. Um, but it's it does seem like this is an issue that is going to have to be corrected um, by underclocking the overclock. <laughs> so like underclocking the boost so that so people are going to have to either come up with a um, uh, a superior cooling system to prevent it from uh, from overclocking itself to that point and that's something he brings up in the video where he talks about how some people are not experiencing issues and the reason why is because they're not uh, their system doesn't have the the throughput uh, to cool it to the point to where it is allowing it to boost to activate those boosts to get to the highest level to where it is starting to run into uh, uh, issues where it's going to crash the desktop and whatnot so um so those so at this point the the fix is seemingly that they're going to have to uh uh underclock those cards and it all comes down to just using cheap ass components and that's it what what a week for nvidia what a week for nvidia and then and then i guess i guess the specs for the new uh, amd big navi or big navi uh <clears throat> uh points to it might actually be better than the RTX 3080. So maybe you just want to wait. I understand that Nvidia pretty much has a pretty good uh, uh they have a pretty good stronghold with a lot of gaming companies, so you're going to you're going to miss out on a lot of cool cool effects and stuff like that that maybe the AMD is not going to be compatible with, but the price point might be uh, much more agreeable to some and you still get a fair amount of power. But who knows? We don't know. Those might have issues too, right? Those might be made with cheap ass components. We'll never know. Uh, I will say though, I've never had an issue with NVIDIA cards like this, where a card just flat out shits itself. I've had RTX cards, I've had AMD cards, ATI cards, Radeons and whatnot, uh, as well. I've never had an issue where it just, just out of the box would crash the desktop like that. That couldn't be corrected with like a, maybe a driver update or something like that. You know, maybe a bad driver, a bad software or something like that might, might fuck it up. But, uh, but yeah, you're happy you're 2070 super. You've had two in the last six months. You've had issues before. Yeah, I have. So I have. Uh, I mean, I have a stack of old ass cards. They don't. They they work fine, but they're just not powerful enough to use anymore. Uh, I think I have a seventy eighty or seven eighty. I have the uh, five eighty t five sixty ti. Uh, I think this machine's. I don't know what this machine's running. I have no idea anymore. Nine eighty ti. I think is what I'm using right now. Um, and for the most part, they've been pretty pretty stable. And I don't have. I don't have any particular. Um, like buying preference for uh, manufacturer or anything like that. I kind of just buy whatever, and uh, and they all just seem to work. So this is the first time that I, I understand that some people have had issues uh, in the past, but I don't think it's that common. Not like this. 
That's my point is this seems like this is a widespread every single card that gets up to a certain temperature um, it, or gets up to a certain boost is going to experience these issues. That's a problem. Um, let me see. Tinfoil hat. NVIDIA has inside info on Big Navi. Uh, Big Navi and had to hype this launch like crazy. Yeah, it's it's it's. It sounds. It just sounds like they use some cheap ass components, and they need to um, correct it in a future revision of of the hardware. That's the only thing they could do is just like just get those. Uh, well, I don't know what those companies going to do because you know they they price they they put the price point up based on the components, so they're going to have to take a hit on the profit or just underclock them to fit. And as Jay's, you know, what I read was that if you underclock it by 100 megahertz, that typically solves the issue. But you know, Jay's Jay's two cents even said. Um, that it could be as little as 15 megahertz like it could be basically nothing and that would solve the problem so we'll see if you if any of you guys have got a 3080 and um you know you want to warm up your case a little bit and see how that how that performs please let us know how that uh, how that works out imagine having to recall a card no one can buy <laughs> Yeah, and that's pretty much where we're at right now. Recall seems like that's the best that's the best option for them right now. Uh, <clears throat> so can just be a VBIOS update as well. Yeah, he mentioned something like that, but that would also entail lowering the clock in a little bit. That's what he said, anyways. Um, but who knows? I don't know. I, I don't build these things. I just buy them. And I'm glad I didn't buy this one because what a pain in the dick that would be. Man, Scalpers right now with a crate full of recalled cards. Oh my god, it's right. Yeah. Jesus. Hmm. <sighs> moving on moving on don't buy don't buy a scalper card you guys wouldn't do that right you guys wouldn't do that <clears throat> can anybody afford that no we can afford that shit <laughs> no thanks um so moving on the xbox one at no the xbox series x uh had the pre-orders this year this week and remarkably the Xbox One X sales were up 747% on Amazon. Now, if you're not familiar, I'll show you here. Uh, Amazon has a uh, a what's hot, what's trending in gaming page, right? Amazon movers and shakers, right? This is in video games. And it tells you the sales are up with certain boxes, right? So that PlayStation 4 is up 66%, uh, which is telling, by the way, considering the PlayStation 5 also had their pre-orders, uh, and that number did not spike any insane amounts, right? Uh, now, the Xbox Series X is no longer... The Xbox One X... Man, fuck that. Uh, is not... Uh, fuck these names. We're going to talk about that, too. But fuck these names. Um, but yeah, this is where they go, and you can, you can see what, how, how things are performing. Um, and this is obviously a uh, uh an issue with parents like top says mom you bought the wrong xbox oh sad christmas oh yeah there's gonna be a sad 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 christmas for some for some kids they're gonna get they're gonna get their hands on a brand new xbox it's the wrong one so yes the xbox series x Xbox One X. I mean, he actually goes through right here. Microsoft's got themselves in a weird spot with Xbox naming situation. Uh, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox Series X, Xbox R, Series R, I think. No, there was, was another one, too. Uh, somebody actually had a really good response to this. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Um, so, yeah, we have one Xbox. You have one Xbox box, one Xbox One, one Xbox One box, one Xbox One X, one Xbox One Xbox, one Xbox Series X, one Xbox Series Xbox, one series of Xbox Series X, one series of Xbox Series Xboxes. So, you can see this naming scheme is fucking stupid. They need to fucking stop right now. Microsoft, please. Please. I understand. You can't call it the Xbox 2 or 3 or whatever because... Two and three are less than five. So naturally, mom and dad would say, why would we get, why would we get Billy or Caden, right? Caden's the name now. Why would we get, why would we get Caden the, the, the two instead of the five? We should just get him the five. Yeah. <sighs> so, um, they actually recently just sent out an email saying that uh, uh, some people may not get their Xbox Series X boxes <laughs> before uh, or on uh, a launch day because of demand. 
So, you've already got an Xbox. Mike's been on that math class. I'm trying. I'm trying. Two, two and three. Less than five. See? Two, three. I already got it. It's built in. It's built in. So, <laughs> please stop. 360. That's what they should do. Just go way bigger than five. The 360 makes sense. Make it a 720. So Microsoft was doing other things in the meantime while not focusing on their naming conventions. Um, they, they picked up a, hold on a second, let me go and do this. They picked up another gaming company. This one is Bethesda and ZeniMax uh, for, the, for the low, low price of $7.5 billion. Okay, it's a fucking lot. It's a lot of money. Now, I don't know why Bethesda's worth that much given the bullshit they've given us. <laughs> but people still spend money on them. Therefore, their valuation is very high. Pocket change. That's right. Just a little game a couple you never heard of. That's right. Uh, even more than what they paid for Minecraft, which is crazy. Which is crazy, right? Because Minecraft was a mess. That was like, what? Uh, Four billion, I think, or something like that. Like two to four billion, something like that. Um, so yeah, seven point five billion. They played. They paid for. Uh, it was two billion. Um, seven point four. Da, 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 Bethesda Softworks, and this brings them up to. Uh, well, first off, Microsoft says that uh, uh, this is to bolster their Game Pass lineup. So we'll see. You know, basically, the next Skyrim or whatever. Basically, every Bethesda game. Uh, being put into the the, uh, the Game Pass system. Microsoft's really working to make Game Pass just like the the mode of um, gaming. Like, that's where you go to get games. They're trying to make it so that why would you, like, um, like you would almost be dumb to, like, buy games. Why would I buy games, you know? Why would I buy a game when I could just pay $5 a month and then play a game for five minutes? That's going to be the joke in, like, five years. People are going to be like, why are you buying games? Oh, I just paid for this service. $5. What, are you going to buy that game just so you can play for five minutes? Which is not, which is not a lie. Which is not a lie. Um, <laughs> was it $10? Well, $10, five, I mean, just across the board. It's like five, ten bucks, whatever. Uh, because we're talking about... Uh, Amazon's Luna system in a second. That's five ninety nine. Four hundreds of games. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, price has been up ten dollars. Still, still, they're they're trying to make that they're trying to make that money um go a long way with their Game Pass by acquiring as many of these. Let me lower my my thing. I get a little bit of feedback here. Uh, by buying as many game companies as humanly possible. Uh, so just just to name a few. They have like twenty three or twenty four companies now underneath their uh, umbrella. But they have three, four, three naturally uh mojang we know arcane rare id double fine obsidian bethesda zenimax so yeah they have a pretty strong lineup actually somebody has a picture here let me grab this real quick um that gives a good a good rundown of the companies underneath xbox game studios so but who's next yeah for reals no seriously who's next i would not see like i would not look at bethesda and say Oh yeah, Microsoft's probably just gonna buy them out. That would just not cross my mind at all, at all. <laughs> uh, Microsoft already said that they are still looking for more. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, of course, of course. They're gonna they're gonna try to acquire as many as possible. Put it underneath their umbrella. Gonna buy out Konami. <laughs> just put it just put it in PlayStation Sony's face. Uh, they're gonna buy out Sony. Hello Games. Dude, Hello Games, I, I I don't know, man. Like I, they just released another uh, major update. I don't know how they keep on making updates, but I would not be surprised at this point if they do end up buying Hello Games. Um, I mean, Hello Games, in my opinion, has redeemed themselves completely, and um, there's a lot of value in No Man's Sky as is. But we'll see. They're making their way to Boardwalk and Park Place. They're going to buy Atari. But Atari probably costs them like nothing, actually. So, so yep. Yeah, expect to see one of the sickest collaborations between, or sickest, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Crossovers with Doom Guy. And Master Chief, I think I've already seen a couple of images floating around of that. Uh, who else? We have uh, 
Wolfenstein is underneath that umbrella as well. We could get all of them in together. Uh, Master Chef, Doom Chief Master. Probably what we'll see is, um, if anything, like in Doom Eternal, we'll see something like extra skins or something like that. You know, like a Master Chief skin. And that stuff is directly compatible. I mean, shit, it's just a big-ass suit. <laughs> just fucking put the big-ass suit in there. This is why they delay the next Halo? The, they, the delay of the next Halo seems to be more about the game itself not being up to snuff. Um, they brought, I don't know his name, but they brought back somebody to help work on the game. And basically retool the game. Um, they didn't say that's what it was for. But when you bring in somebody, and I wish I had his fucking name. But when you bring in somebody of, at his level to look at your game when it's supposed to be close to launching. Uh, that means that there are some major changes that are going to be going in. Uh, Todd Howard said that they weren't planning on doing an outsourcing for the properties anymore. Does it count as outsourcing for Obsidian and Bethesda are both under Daddy Microsoft? Doom guy would beat the hell out of all of them. I don't need any guns. How much is Nintendo worth? Oh, wow. You think, you think, you think of that? No way. Nintendo. What is Nintendo's value? Hold on a second. Nintendo. Let me see. Around 37 billion. Let me see Microsoft. Microsoft. Microsoft sits at uh oh there's 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 gonna be nothing here, but um one trillion, one trillion. So hey, maybe <laughs> it's a drop in the bucket for what a trillion dollar company. Jesus Christ. Would governor would government even allow that sell? What for um Nintendo to uh wait, you mean Nintendo to 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 Microsoft? Of course, because it's an American company buying another one. They may not like the other direction, though, depending on who's in office. But uh, Nintendo has so much money, I doubt they would. Oh, yeah, Nintendo has. They've even stated that they have um, they have play money to work with. Nintendo, I feel like Nintendo is probably just, just probably one of the most profitable. They're like Apple, but smaller, of course, right? Where they just have money in the bank so they could do shit. Yeah, Nintendo's Japanese, but do you think that matters to this administration? Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that, like, I do mean that, like, if they're blocking, you know, China from uh, having any dealings with companies like Riot and all that stuff, or they're looking at it, they're looking at companies like Riot because of their dealings with uh, Tencent, um, it doesn't have to do exclusively with China, even though it kind of does, but uh, a lot of it is that um, they, they just want the companies to be... Uh, local so that way you know u.s regulations can uh regulate how data is handled that's the biggest thing is they just want to regulate how, how regulate how data is handled they don't want another government like like china J J obviously japan's not really an issue at all uh, but still if they want they if they want any kind of uniformity across their uh um how they propose these uh blockings of deals or, or looking into deals with uh, uh Chinese companies, then they probably want to just make it a blanket statement that they don't want to have any dealings with any international companies. Um, but I doubt that's the case. I think it's it really is probably just China. Um, you know, it's one of the best companies to work for, too. Good people at the top. Oh, good. We know that. So, let me see. <clears throat> Speaking of game companies, <laughs> it's like every it's like every story in this article and this in this show. Speaking of game companies. Mike Morheim has launched, launched, has announced a new game company called Dreamhaven. Mike who? Mike Morheim, co-founder of Blizzard Entertainment and basis for Elite Torn Chieftain, uh, has launched a new game company called, uh, called Dreamhaven, Dreamhaven. Um, no announcements yet. They have two companies, uh, two game developers, sorry, two game developers underneath their wing studios. Uh, and that is, da, 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 oh, I didn't write, oh, Moonshot and Secret Door. Um, did, did, my M has already tried to buy Dream Maybe that, That's going to be the running joke, right? It's like, well, wait a minute. Did they buy them yet? What's Blizzard? Small indie dev, dev company Blizzard? Yeah, exactly. So, I uh, so yeah, they brought in a bunch of, um, you know, there's some familiar names here. But they, uh, uh, people they brought in on board. So Jason Chase, I, I scrolled down. I saw, I saw Dustin Browder, D bro. And I was like, wait a second. So I went ahead and, and obviously some of the names you recognize. Um, but just to give you an idea of how many ex Blizzard employees are on this list. Uh, so there are, there are, I think six people named. There are six people named, uh, and three people as leaders of both of these studios. And of the six, Five of them are former Blizzard employees. Um, 
Dustin Browder, Browder, of course, you guys, uh, well, maybe if you don't know him, he's the, uh, he's the former StarCraft II lead designer. Uh, Chris Sigaty, I don't know how to pronounce his name, uh, also lead producer on StarCraft II. No surprise, Mike Morheim is a, a big StarCraft fan, not just being a you know developer of the game, but just in general, he does love uh, StarCraft. Um, let's see, Jason Chase, ex-producer of Hearthstone, uh, Alan... Dabiri, Captain Adab, uh, game director from Hearts uh, from uh, Heroes of the Storm, and Eric Dodds, game director on Hearthstone. Half half of the people that are listed as you know people working for Dreamhaven um, in this article are members of Elite Torn Chieftain. <laughs> so clearly, clearly, this is an attempt for Mike Morehand to get the band back together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so lots of familiar names, lots and lots of familiar names uh, that are coming over to uh, to the Dreamhaven crew, and <clears throat> they need Samwise to complete the set. Oh yeah, there's there's uh, there's one more. I can't remember his name, but there is one more. But you do have three out of the five core group. Three out of five? Yeah, I think three out of the five. Four out of the f six. Shit, I don't remember. But anyways. Um, so, as somebody who has been, uh, I worked for a company that split, and um, there was a new company that was made where they took the technology, right? I've explained this before. I won't go into detail. But uh, we basically split the company, and part of the technology went one way, and the other part stayed with the uh, the new parent company. It was an acquisition split, right? And so what happened is a lot of employees, including the founders, similar to like Mike Morheim, uh, they they launched this new game company or this new uh, uh, tech company. And <clears throat> what they started doing was uh, hiring everybody from the original company that everyone split off from. It's called poaching. Uh, it's called poaching when you go through and you basically just steal employees from a company you used to work for. I would not be surprised if we see more people, more people from the, from the, uh, from the Blizzard group and probably like, and probably like classic folks, like people who've been around for a while, maybe Sam was, maybe, you know, whoever, um, <clears throat> creatively acquire. Apple's a pro at it. Oh, I'm sure who wouldn't want to go work for Apple? I'll work for Apple. Uh, you, call, you call it a good idea? Of course. That's the best thing to do. Tactical acquisition. <laughs> um, well, some were probably fired. No, no, they all they'll just leave. People fed up with Activision overlords. That's right. Yeah. Um, I can see a lot of people a lot of employees at Blizzard, I'm a thousand percent certain, are reaching out to Mike and and crew, uh, and seeing if they can't get um, a position at this company, because they probably don't want to be a part of Activision anymore. I would not be surprised, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, I was say, Devil Lord, don't jump ship, don't jump ship, Josh. <clears throat> um. David Brevik, where is he at? Hold on a sec. David Brevik, he is. No, he's got his own game company now, doesn't he? Fuck, I can't keep track of some of these guys. Wait, do they get along anymore? Hold on a second. I don't remember. Uh, Rock and Roll Racing 2? It's a Blizzard IP, man. Although you could probably buy it, I'm sure. Uh, who would want to be part of Active Blizzard? They made such good choices recently. Did they recently announce their new MMO, World of Dreamhaven? <laughs> Wad. <laughs> um, yeah, not yet, but uh, I'm sure it's coming. They have no clues whatsoever on what what they plan on developing as a company. So they're just announcing the company first, uh, mostly just to get hype going, to get investors interested. Uh, let's go actually go click on the careers. I haven't looked at this yet. Let's see what they have in their careers page. Let me see. Come build something new with us. Let me see. 3D generalist for both companies, concept artist, engineering. Uh, let's see operations. Okay, so not a ton, but there's still some. Uh, no social anything yet. So they, they probably already ha have people or just feel like they don't necessarily need to uh, hire anybody just yet um, for that position because, you know, there's really not a whole lot that... Uh, I'm also going to give these guys a follow. Um, not a whole lot to manage on the social side. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. How can you not like this man? Mike Morheim. Uh, yeah, looking forward to see what he puts out. We'll see. Most of the people he pulled, and it could just be because he is more StarCraft leaning. Um, they were mostly StarCraft folks, some Heroes of the Storm folks, basically StarCraft mod, uh, and uh, and a couple of Hearthstone guys. So, 
So, I don't know what that means. Could just be chance because they're all in the band together, or it could be that they're uh, planning on releasing something in that realm, which would make sense because that's their forte. I can't imagine you're bringing over these leaders who worked on the like one of the biggest RTSs of all time, and then you know, you know, a, a pretty good CCG uh, and a failed MOBA. Uh, I can't imagine you could bring these guys over to make, say, a first-person shooter, right? So I think you should temper your expectations to. Maybe an RTS, maybe a, maybe a MOBA, uh, maybe a card game. But you're not going to look at, uh, you're not going to get, you know, Overwatch, you know, clone or anything like that. I seriously, seriously doubt it. Uh, uh, Overwatch folks are maybe still happy with Uncle Jeff. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They probably are. Probably are. Call Uberwatch. Yeah. Hero World of Star Stone. Star Heroes of Stone. That's right. That's right. So, <clears throat> other things that happened this week, we had a bit of a um, a bit of a, a, a hiccup in common sense amongst the uh, Twitch family. They decided that they were going to do. Starting today, we'll be testing automated mid-roll ads for some viewers. These ads will directly support the creator and won't run if the viewer has an ad break in that channel recently. Your feedback is welcome to help shape this feature. Uh, obviously, they got sh shit on for this. Very sus. Click on this right here. It says, I'm honestly terrified of how... I, I've re I haven't screened any of these, by the way. So uh, It says, I'm honestly terrified of how Twitch is getting uh, going to frick over the ASMR community. Okay, this tweet's fine. They censored the word fuck. Uh, I always felt like Twitch was an escape from the BS on YouTube. Mid-roll ads, demonetization, uh, not showing content to subs. But now I feel like we don't have a safe place anymore. Automated ads in a live show? Nobody wants that. On YouTube, the creator has control when the ads run. On Twitch, the long, the long format pre-roll ad already hurt streamers uh there's actually we had a good good uh, a good statement here um from the global community engagement manager for blizzard entertainment josh allen and he says putting my feedback into more words apparently it's unclear why just run ads every half hour isn't a viable option for many streamers and so dependence is depending it all comes down to the type of content you're producing and uh i went through a highlight he's got a whole bunch of tweets here i recommend reading i'll leave it in the uh i'll leave it in the notes here but but first, I mentioned from our sponsors. Yeah, exactly. So, some uh, really, really good points here. He says, um, "I'm playing. I'm often playing with other streamers. Even if it did become a customary to step away every thirty minutes or so to run an ad break, imagine four out of five people in a group doing that. Likely on different schedules. Not feasible in the slightest. And that makes just, just even imagine playing Among Us, right? Like, if you miss thirty seconds of Among Us, you can miss an entire discussion." You can miss an entire, like somebody gets killed, right? It was Dimmy. There's, you can miss so much stuff just, just in 30 seconds to run this fucking ad. Uh, to simply put, mineral ads will be disruptive to my content pretty much no matter when I run them. Can you guys see this? Yes, you can. Um, and it says, uh, it says, it says, and, and it's better to have a random few get interrupted than all my viewers. So that's, that's the thing too. It's like, and he even mentions it here, I think. Uh, it says the fact that sub slash turbo won't see ads doesn't help anything either. If I'm running an ad, I'm doing my best to avoid having anything interesting happen on stream while it's playing. This essentially forces an ad break on everyone, including subs. So, yeah. Like, these are all fantastic points. This is TLDR. This change makes the viewership experience worse. No matter what. For any content that doesn't have guaranteed natural breaks every 30 minutes. That's a bad thing and a huge step backwards for Twitch. So, Twitch. Twitch's response was uh it says thank you for all your feedback we have completed the mid-roll ads test ads are an essential part of keeping twitch freely available and we understand your concerns we'll continue to work on ways to improve the viewer experience and uh so it says so what does this mean are mid-rolls still a thing are they over he says hey bryonado we've concluded the test so viewers will no longer see mid-rolls we've gone through a lot of the feedback provided on the original tweet user voice etc and we'll take this into account before we execute on any future ad changes so um just so you know the uh, i wrote them down here ads typically and actually i'm gonna give you a demonstration of what it looks like okay now this is this is a mock-up but from what I understand, I, I didn't see any of this in action, but from what I understand, this is uh, roughly what it looks like here. Oops, I muted it. 
playing a game, everything's chill, right? Heavy interaction with the stream, right? Put with Kentucky Fried Chicken, sweet and savory. Uh, so I've seen a few. <laughs> and you know, it's fun. I, I think that all of them are like Souls likes that I see, right? It's like it's either it's either this or like any other like Souls like game, it, which which makes sense because you're hyper focused, so you can't like take a break in the middle of a fight and just say, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, and run an ad real quick. Let me pause. Let me just let me just interrupt my flow. I'm just you know, just play an ad for you guys. Um, so yeah, this is this is a mock up of what it would look like. Obviously, yeah, people would be upset. Yeah, of course. Uh, remember that troll tweet I said about WoW? It was about this too. Oh, was it? I don't have that tweet available. But uh, but yeah, it's it's it was. Uh, my tinfoil hat says that they knew that they were going to get shit on for this. That they knew that they were going to get shit on for this, but they did it anyways. And maybe maybe there's a couple things that they benefited from this. As a salesperson, I would hit up all the companies like, hey, we're about to run this shit that's going to absolutely piss everyone off, but you're going to get primo placement on every single stream for every affiliate and every partner, even even the big dogs, okay? Even the big dogs are going to get it. I think XQC also had like, somebody, apparently you made like $20,000 on these mineral ads, which is an anomaly, let me tell you. I'll tell you why in a second, but... But yeah, to me, it sounds like somebody got a pretty fat check from this test. <laughs> There's no way they didn't know this was going to be an issue. There's no fucking way. No way. And if so, why didn't they test it on a smaller group instead of experimenting on, uh, let me see, uh, the entire site? Seems silly. Oh, he was joking when he said that? Okay, cool. Uh, although those numbers don't, I, those numbers don't feel like they'd be far off. So the average CPM for ads is three dollars and fifty cents per one thousand views. Uh, so it does not seem too far fetched to me that somebody that would get twenty to I don't know fifty thousand views. I don't know exactly what he gets, um, but let's just say twenty thousand uh, views. It does not seem. I wouldn't put it past them for like every maybe a mid roll ad every hour and a half uh, that 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 would that that would uh, turn into a uh, you know several thousand dollars uh but for somebody like me who just has ads play just whenever uh i made let's see hold on let me do the math here six dollars and 88 cents now imagine imagine if i made five times that amount running ads in the middle of content in the middle of all these among us streams just right in the middle of doing something. Boop. Gonna run an ad. Is it worth it to me to make 24 extra dollars? <laughs> to make this the viewing experience fucking terrible? I don't think so. Um, here's an actual case from a Sony event a couple days ago. Oh, let me see this. Hold on a second. Let me see. Yo, Twitch. This is real? Let's leave Lego Hago powder back in the decades with the Star Wars. Witches and wizards who came before. I had Chamber of Secrets and then Game Boy Advance. I get lost in the countryside anyway. Oh, Twitch! Twitch! You guys give me ads in the middle of the fucking street! Twitch! His fucking response! Yes! And then what? Just back to business when it comes back? He helped make that trailer? <gasps> really? And so they're talking about, he's talking about a trailer that, oh look, he even shows. He even shows in context here. How funny. Oh man, I'm so glad. I'm going to put this in the notes because that's a good one. That's a good one. All I found was mock-ups. Oh man. He helped make the trailer and he's right in the middle of watching it and it gets dunked on by none other than a fucking ad. Poor guy. Poor fucking guy. Although, I'm glad it happened because this is another example of how that's a shit-ass system. <laughs> that's a shit-ass system. Jesus. Um, so I've never used Adblock in my life and the number one problem is I found is sound levels and ads. Uh, I will tell you, though, that Twitch, um, one of Twitch's top... Let me see. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Go to the help section. One of their top issues... I didn't show you this here. Uh, is that... 
uh, one of the top commented on issues or upvoted issues on their site is um, right here. Normalize ad ad volume with content vo volume. Uh, so 908. This is a tough one, right? Let me see what it, let me see. Partial release. Hold on a second. User voice program manager, Twitch respondent says, setting this to partial release status as the majority of ads on web and TV apps will now have normalized sound. We are still continuing to work on this and we'll update the status again when it is. Okay, so that should definitely be a partial because the first thing I thought of when I watched this was not every stream is in the red right and by in the red i mean like on the vu not every stream are in are, are, are reaching just below peak some of them are like in the green because some people think oh yeah and the green is fine green that's where i want to be right nah, not really <laughs> not when everything else is in the yellow high yellow or in the red uh when i stream i have the high the peaks go in the red right but the bulk of the content sit high yellow um so normalizing ad volume the way that she's describing it would more than likely be normalizing the ad volume across all ads not in relation to the stream that would be a, i guess a tech uh, it says right here, it says normalizing volumes with stream average volume or peak volume wouldn't take a huge amount of processing power when you fix the problem entirely. So we'll see. And it says it's, it actually it says it's required by the U.S.'s FCC and other broadcast mediums, but it's really just a quality of life. I like how they threw that in there. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a tech that they'd have to actually develop in order to make that work. So normalizing the uh, uh, the ad volume across other ads doesn't make any sense when they're all fucking loud. <clears throat> you have to adjust the volume all the time on Twitch. Oh yeah, that's why I use I use a um, just for you guys if, if you guys need if you guys need a, a an extension I'll hook you guys up. Uh, volume Master. This this thing is the best. Um, you you can take it from a hundred percent to six hundred percent, and it solves all of my all my issues with audio across every stream. Um, volume master will fuck up your full screen videos though. Does it? I haven't had any issues with that. Um, so your, your, uh, your results, your, your mileage may vary in that, in that regard. I haven't had any issues with that yet though. Um, yeah, it won't work. Oh wow. Weird with the full screen video, huh? Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't have any videos up. So maybe next time, uh, wait, yeah, dude, oh, wait, here we go. Go back to our friend here. Let me see what this does. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually mute the thing here because I don't want to blast your ears off. Okay, that didn't work. Let me lower it over here. <laughs> I just overrode that completely. 600% full screen. Ah, I see. Yeah, look at that. F F11 fixes the problem. Okay, cool. You got an F11, man. All right. And it works fine. But noted. Um, back to this. I always wondered about that. Twitch needs a tool for streamers to normalize their streams to a set level so that all streams are the same. You know, this is mostly just a knowledge thing. It's a general knowledge thing. A lot of streamers just don't know. Like, again, looking at the VU right here on Slobs, uh, and it'd be OBS and, and all, it's the same on every XSplit. Uh, you know, you would think as a freshy streamer, you would think, I should keep my levels in the green. Um, and that's just incorrect. Uh, they should really change that system. It should just be green and then red. <laughs> <laughs> like it should just be green too loud and that's it that way people can push it and get closer to uh what would be a nominal uh range for you know everybody across the board but you know i don't know what the math is and why they have like a yellow red at those certain points but they should just ditch it and just go right from green to red but are all streaming our software same out and output levels uh, i would assume so because they do they, they just go to zero db so i would imagine Everything is basically negative, right? So it's zero, zero dB is unity. Uh, everything below that is going to be negative. So if, if, if they're sending a signal at zero dB, then that should be, it should be the st standard across the board. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know. I mean, like maybe, maybe one of the streaming software pieces has a different, um, um, different approach to handling audio do we got a phase of gaming deals now like copyrighted music? No, we did not. That's not on today's list. Unfortunately. Um, but what is on a list, speaking of big-ass companies, close, um, Amazon. Amazon has announced a cool new cloud gaming service called Luna, which honestly will probably trump all the other ones. xCloud, Stadia, and the reason why is because it's going to have uh, Twitch integration. And I do feel like, you know, maybe the casual user, oh, yeah, I'll, whatever, I, whatever I can stream, I got Google Stadia or I got, you know, the xCloud service or whatever. But 
I can't see it standing up to to uh, Luna. Amazon just has too much of a presence presence in households, period, where they can take advantage of all of their hardware and put all this stuff uh, and get this stuff out there to um, uh, Twitch and all that shit to all their users. So Stadia is still a thing. Stadia, you know, you know, actually, we're going to talk about this right now, actually. But um, Amazon, <clears throat> uh, Amazon says that they're going to have hundreds of games at launch uh, and Luna, or sorry, uh, Stadia basically said the same thing, but man, their their release schedule was was just falling apart uh, and just not working out initially. I don't know where they're at now, but uh, they definitely had some issues uh, right off the bat with getting uh, getting releases out. So, <sighs> um, and yeah, uh, and AWS is backing it. So, like, this is this is going to be a formidable contender in the in the cloud gaming service. I really, really don't see. Uh, maybe, I mean, maybe X cloud, but I think X cloud integration, Xbox, something like that, or even PC. Sure. But I mean, stadia, I can't see it happening. Uh, now, now here's how it works. So first off, it's going to be $5 and 99 cents per month. Um, maybe eventually they'll roll it into prime or something every year. And then they'll raise the price of prime the next year as they typically do. Um, and uh, it's going to support 4K 60 FPS for selected titles. <clears throat> Cloud is a myth. It's still servers. Uh, and it's going to be coming to PC, Mac, iOS. I had imagined probably also to their uh, Android-based uh, Amazon devices, like the Cube or the Fire Stick or whatever. I'm sure they're probably going to integrate those somehow. Uh, will it include games? Or do you still need to buy them? Ooh. It says, it says that uh, it's gonna be it's gonna come with uh, uh, with these games, but I don't know if there's gonna be stuff at a premium. But it even says like Ubisoft's gonna have games on this thing, so we'll have. I, I, maybe one of you guys know, but I don't think I saw it in the article. <clears throat> Here's what I have. Here's what I have. It says over a hundred games will be available at launch. Okay, which to me says maybe pay for it, maybe. It just comes with the service. Uh, but they have Resident Evil 7, Control, Panzer Dragon, A Plague, uh, a Plague Tale, The Surge 2, Ukulele, Grid, Abzu, um, Abzu uh, Brothers of Tale, Two Sons, and then more titles will be added over time. And they're going to have massive and completely unsurprising amount of Twitch integration. And the way the way they're integrating it is that you could watch streams. It says, uh, inside the Luna experience, players will see Twitch streams for games in the service. And from Twitch, they'll be able to instantly start playing Luna games, Amazon says. Games can be played either with a mouse, keyboard, or a Bluetooth adapter. To go along with this, Amazon also announced its own Alexa-enabled Luna controller, which will cost $49.99 during the early access period. Um, my understanding is that the 599 is to play games through the system without purchases, and then maybe the Ubisoft new releases require another sub on top of that with speculation from the webpage. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much, Titley. Um, it's ambiguous. Yeah, exactly. They don't they don't really say. It. That's what I say. I didn't I didn't see it anywhere. I assume that it was part of the service. So thanks for asking that question. That's a good question. Uh, so the controller, interesting uh, take on the controller here. Uh, so obviously Alexa enabled, so I could talk to it, I guess. Um, but it says. My, my phone woke up. I thought I, I thought I triggered it somehow. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, it says uh, the Luna controller is Alexa enabled and connects directly to the cloud to effortlessly control your game. So it's not going to control to a local device. It's going to go directly to the cloud. So you'll be playing the game on the, the cloud, and then you're going to see the results, which uh, should cut down on latency. Um, and it says, uh, featuring a multiple antenna design that prioritizes uninterrupted Wi-Fi for a lower latency gaming. In fact, our testing showed a reduction in round-trip latency when playing Luna Controller with Cloud Direct versus Luna Controller with Bluetooth. Uh, with reductions of between 17 and 30 milliseconds among PC, Fire TV. Oh, so there it is. They are going to have support Fire TV. Uh, it's not It's not listed on the, the summary, but uh, that seems like a natural thing for them to do. Um, because the Luna Controller connects directly to the cloud service, players can easily switch between screens such as Fire TV to mobile phone without additional pairing uh, or configuration changes. What is this? Well, I'm not getting this. No spy on my voice things in my house. Thanks. Oh, man. Come on. These digital assistants are so awesome. You just got to let them just give you targeted ads, man. That's all. Uh, they got any Bethesda games? Yeah. They say, uh, I could imagine the games bought on Amazon directly, physical otherwise, are added automatically to Luna. Yeah, I do wonder how they're planning on handling that. Like, 
Uh, you know, there's the Twitch. There's a Twitch, uh, you know, free games through the service. I'm sure that would be part of it. I, I would like to see their library and how they handle those things. But yeah, I think that Luna, Luna of all the cloud services, Luna is the one. I mean, you know, Amazon overlords and all that shit. But uh, Luna is the one that uh, I feel is going to be the most successful and I would actually use. Um, but I won't because I have Steam Link. So why would I bother? Right. Steam Link just trumps everything. I would not be surprised if um, the same way that everybody went after NVIDIA for doing their NVIDIA uh uh, not shadow play. They're in video streaming service where you can stream games from your PC to any device. Um, everybody went after it because they were like, well, hold on a second. We're trying to build a service where people actually pay for this stuff. And NVIDIA was like, oh, and they ended up pulling games from the service. GeForce Now. Thank you so much, Merzing. Um, so yeah, NVIDIA ended up pulling it. Uh, we're not pulling the service, but basically pulling a bunch of games. Now nobody talks about GeForce Now. Is it even a thing anymore? It was a thing for the longest time, but the second it went, the second it actually launched, then all of a sudden, everybody got real upset about it. Um, but thankfully, Steam Link has gone just under the radar. Where we don't have to really worry about it just yet. But I'm pretty sure there will be things put in. Uh, as companies like Apple like you know, push more and more, uh, well, they get into the cloud gaming service, which I'm sure they're going to do because everybody's doing it. Uh, obviously, on Amazon Fire TV and all those things, I pro probably you probably can't even load Steam Link software on there. Who knows? But it still exists. It still exists barely. It's still breathing. <laughs> There's still a pulse. <laughs> I heard shit about this, about, about this service in so long. Uh, what if Valve put in a cloud gaming thing to run your Steam library? That's basically what it is. That's exactly what it is. You're just running it off your own system. You are the cloud. 16 times of detail it just works to say they got to support those NVIDIA shields. Hey, man, my little NVIDIA shield portable was so, so good. So good, man. I I I love that thing. That with the flip screen, it's like an Xbox controller with a flip up screen. God, it was just the best, just the fucking best. I still have it. It probably still works because it's a fucking tank. Um, but man, I love that thing. So, speaking of things that I love, <sighs> Among Us is so popular. It's so popular. That the developers have decided to cancel the sequel. <sighs> yep, that's right. We're not gonna get we're not gonna get an Among Us two. But what we are gonna get is actual content updates for the original. Now, I did see that there were some dissenters in the Among Us channel in our Discord era. You say it's such a weird choice. Why? Why? I, I do I do want to know why because and I'll I'll go ahead and let me speak my mind first. So, like Kimmy says, you don't have to buy another game. One, two, there's not going to be a content drought between when people get tired of the three maps that we have available three maps that we have available on Among Us One, uh, to when they release Among Us Two because like Yegorek says, uh, it could take up to a year or probably more. To actually finalize and get out. And even in a year, we'd get like a base level, you know, just a base level uh, game. Early access or something like that. Uh, to me, this sounds like, it sounds like Terraria Otherworlds. Where you have, uh, where you have a game that really isn't needed. <laughs> and instead, just, just make the first one better. It says, oh, here we go. Here it says, because they themselves uh, say that the, they say themselves that the code for the original game is jank as fuck and harder for them to work with. So they are making it actively harder to develop the game and add content uh, to it just to avoid putting out a new game. Now, I am not a developer. It's like the I am, I am not a lawyer thing, right? I am not a developer, although that is, I, I'm not, anyway, so, um, but... We have heard game companies say that before. For example, Clay. Clay has said that multiplayer is impossible because of the way the game was built. But then they figured it out. They hired some folks or something and they figured it out. And now we have Don't Starve Together. Um, so... To me, it seems like they could probably 
with the 60 million people that have purchased the game, they could probably afford to bring in somebody who could take a look at the code and say, hey, I could probably fix this up in three months, four months. And it might just be one, not in one person. It could be a team of people. Let's go ahead and just sit down. We're gonna, we're gonna line up our sprints. We're gonna have all of our stuff up on our Trello board and we're gonna get this shit handled. Depo says that the code base that they're using is old and not supported anymore and it hasn't been for years. Exactly, yes, no, everything Ira says is correct. They did, they did put out a statement. Let me, uh, let me pull it up here. They did pull out a statement. Let me see. <clears throat> oh, whoops, that's not it, my bad. Uh, let me see. Uh, here we go. Uh, they did put out a statement and they did say that the code base is pretty, um, pretty, uh, old and jank. So, you know, they, uh, stay on topic. Stay on topic. I guess I was. Uh, but yeah, this is the code is old and jank. It says, it means going deep into the core code of the game and reworking several parts of it. We have lots of things planned and we're excited to bring new content to everyone as you continue to enjoy playing. I think this is the best thing they could do. Um, sure, maybe, maybe this is a difficult decision for them to do, but, uh, if this gets us more maps faster than waiting for Among Us 2, then I am totally down. I am certain they will probably just retool the fucking game. They'll hire some people, they'll retool the game, and they'll make it so that they can provide updates. Um, you're happy, yo, you're happy to pay, no, no, you're, I get it, Ira, I get it. You're happy to pay for a new, for a new game, but I don't think the game would survive. I really don't think the game would survive a content drought between the three maps they have now and Among Us 2, which may not release until the end of 2021. I don't think it's going to survive that. Uh, I, th I think that what they're doing, I, I, I think that, I understand what you're saying, um, <clears throat> but not everybody, even $5, right? Uh, even free on mobile, right? I, I think... We'll all be in suck aside anyways, yeah, for reals. Uh, I, I think that, I, I do think this is the best, um, the best approach for them. Um, see, I'm, I'm happy they're going to try to fix the first game. Then if they think it could be better. Yeah, will they add a voice chat that automatically turns on during meetings, mutes dead, etc.? That would be fantastic. What they did say was uh, servers. So uh, Forte is working uh, very hard to figure out the server issues. So they're working on servers. Uh, colorblind support, sure. Uh, friends slash account system. I don't know if that's necessary, but okay. Um, <clears throat> a new stage which is great. Uh, and then they have lots of other things planned as well. Now, the thing with, with voice uh, is usually what they do, what game companies do is they end up licensing uh, voice software from other companies. Uh, an example would be like Vivox, right? Vivox is a voice, I don't know, if I don't think they're around anymore, but uh, they, they just did voice integrations into other games. Um, <coughs> Sorry. Uh, they just did voice integration into the games for licensing, right? Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the route they went in order to integrate that kind of shit. Uh, the user made kill animations are the best. Yes, yes. And said, yeah, I want custom kill animations. That would be fantastic. I would love to see that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I think this is good. I think this is good. Again, it, it remind, just yesterday we were talking about Terraria Otherworlds and how it definitely seemed like the game that we didn't need. And they put all of their, and they ended up putting their, their dev time and money and everything instead of trying to develop another game, a sequel to Terraria. Uh, they just put that into, um, you know, making Terraria 1 better. And as somebody who has logged a lot of hours in, Terrar in Terraria lately, thank you, Declan, um, <clears throat> I, I could tell you that the game is fantastic. They have done a really, really good job with fleshing out that game. I have no complaints with Terraria at all. Absolutely none. Um, almost every, everything, everything that I didn't like at the beginning is solved through crafting or solved through acquisition or solved through just, just typical progression. Uh, <clears throat> and it's just great. Like walking up to a whole bunch of chests and clicking a button and it restocks everything. Fuck, man. You got favorites and have everything exchanged automatically. It's like Space Engineers. But simplify it. I love it. Um, <clears throat> Steam Workshop. Oh, man. You imagine? Workshop support? That's last. That's definitely last. But, but yeah. So, that's it for the news. We made it. We made it. Isn't there a separate Terraria 2 too? I don't think so. But I don't know. Other Worlds is the other thing they're working on. But uh, that's it for the news. Uh, Among Us also available on Itch. Uh, it won't get Steam Workshop. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, like they they still could and just just share the data like with other uh, platforms or something, but uh, but they that still that that would be an absolute last thing. Like there's no way that would really happen anytime too, uh, anytime soon. <clears throat> um, so 
So, thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry for the sniffles. I'll let you guys know my test results when they come back. Uh, more than likely, it's going to be negative. Uh, I think what I have is just the fucking cold. Just a very ill-timed cold, and that's it. So, knock on wood. Uh, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. Chat! Chat! Thank you for hanging out. Sorry for the hiccups at the beginning. Sometimes internet just want to do internet things. Say goodbye to YouTube as you are. Stop being sick. I know. <clears throat> I'm trying. Trying. So, have a good one. I will see you guys later.